Welcome to part one of four episode series where I will be using psychology, neuroscience and also insights from this book Happiness by Design by Paul Doland to help us understand how depression blurs out the positive aspects of our life and also how to reclaim those little moments of joy. So let's start with understanding how depression hijacks our brain's happiness filters. And also at the end of this video, I'm gonna give you a small challenge because I want you to engage actively with the material that I'm presenting. I don't want you to become only a passive listener because ideally I would like people to benefit as much as possible, even from those very simple exercises, because I strongly believe that small steps over time, they can add up to measurable changes. So here is something fascinating. Depression doesn't just make us sad, but it actually can change how our brain process happiness. Research shows that depression overworks the part of our brain called the default mode network. And this is the zone responsible for self-reflection and replaying past events. And this is why we might sometimes get stuck in a loop of regret, asking ourselves things like, why did I say this? What is the point? At the same time, depression also does a great job at muffling the regions of our brain that help us to feel pleasure and stay present in current moment. And Paul Dolan explains it perfectly. He says that happiness isn't just about what happens to us, but it is about what we actually notice. We can say that depression acts like noise cancelling headphones, so it muffles all the good moments and amplifies all the negative ones. And that's why in therapy we work on helping you to untangle those negative intrusive thinking patterns. Because depression tells you that everything is bad, your life is terrible, your surrounding is terrible, everything is gloomy, nothing will never work, right? So depression blurs out all the positive aspects of your life how little they might be, even if it's a cup of coffee, or maybe it, if, even if it is only a high from your neighbor, you're not gonna remember that. You're not gonna focus there. You're gonna focus on what's negative and what brings you down. Have you ever thought that if I'm gonna get this job, if I'm gonna buy a house, if I'm gonna find love, then finally I will be happy. And then maybe you've reached your goal, you've achieved what you wanted, but still you couldn't feel the happiness. And this is not because you are unthankful. We have research done by Paul Dolan saying that actually, surprisingly, we are really bad at predicting what can make us truly happy. But depression makes it even harder because it numbs our reward center that normally would help us to feel pleasure and joy from things that are good in our life. And there are two big reasons for that. So first of all, we have anhedonia, and this is a clinical term, meaning depression can make even the favorite activities feel dull and joyless. And then we have a rival fallacy. And this is that false belief that happiness is waiting for us at some point in the future. So we imagine like there's some sort of like finish line and if we're gonna reach that line, then only we're gonna be able to feel happy. When in reality, the happiness is actually hidden in the tiny everyday moments that depression trains us to ignore. All right, so now let's think how we can fight back, what we can do about it, how we can don't buy into those false narratives that depression gives us. We can use some ideas from this book by Paul Dolan and also from CBT. So for the next three days, I want you to ask yourself these three very simple questions. So first of all, you will have to notice what you're doing what activity it is, whether you're scrolling on your phone, maybe you're talking to your friend, maybe you're walking in the park. Then secondly, I want you to score from zero to 10 how much you can enjoy this activity. Is it two? Is it 10? 
is there any pleasure that you're getting out of it? And then thirdly, I want you to ask yourself the question where your mind went at the time when you were doing the activity. Were you focusing on what your friend was saying to you? Or were you maybe replaying conversation that you had with someone the other day? Or maybe you were thinking how unhappy you are. And this is not about being self-critical and judging yourself, but it is about noticing this narrative of your depression. By doing this simple exercise, you're gonna be able to start noticing how depression hijacks your focus, how it pulls you towards what's hurtful, what's difficult, and how it blurs away what actually could be helpful to you. A study conducted in 2022 found that people who practice this sort of attention tracking activity rewire the brain's focus in just few weeks. So however small the initial change is, it can actually lead long term to measurable changes. I'm sure that if you're someone dealing with depression, low mood, then you can relate with this. Then the first thing that you will hear from your depression, it is what's the point, right? So now let's think what we can do about it, but so that you're not going to become as well overwhelmed with those different activities. So we will try to take baby steps. So first of all, let's focus on pleasure. Take a small bite of some food, maybe you can take one raisin and then chew it for 20 seconds. And in this 20 seconds, you do nothing else except focusing on the taste, on the texture, how cold or warm it is, or maybe even the movement of your jaw, right? So that 20 seconds of focus on what you're chewing in your mouth can actually give you a tiny spark of dopamine already. And secondly, we have purpose because depression loves to blur out purpose from our life. And without purpose, we don't really have the skeleton. There's nothing really holding us up, right? So it's very difficult then to manage day-to-day -day things. So in order to help you rebuild your purpose, you can start with sending someone a simple high text message or maybe smiley emoji without any pressures or any expectations attached. And behavior science shows that small social connections such as sending this very brief text message can help you with rebuilding motivation. And I can also give you an example from real life when one of my patients recently, she was very reluctant to participate in this sort of experiment. But actually she did. And on a regular basis, she was texting three of her friends and they were very brief messages like hi or maybe a smiley emoji. And then after two months, she decided that she actually gonna go out with one of her friends, which for her, it was an amazing achievement because she was self-isolating for many months. And thirdly, we have attention shift. So your depression loves to focus on what's hurtful and what's difficult. And in the moment when you notice that this is what is happening, I warned you, to find three things in your surroundings that you can spot. So it could be like even an empty, dirty coffee cup, or maybe a stain on the wall, or maybe some books on the side of your desk, right? So this very simple exercise is not about positive thinking, but it is, it is about grounding. It is about giving yourself a break from those intrusive thoughts. It's about disrupting the spiral of negative thinking pattern. And all these different activities aren't the quick fix overnight, but they are there to help you to understand that what the person tells you isn't the ultimate truth. And also it helps you to understand that you have authority over your life, not your depression. So if this resonates with you, I would like you to participate in this very simple experiment pick one of those three micro activities. So whether it is a sending text message to someone, chewing food for 20 seconds, or spotting three boring things in your surroundings. And then notice what happens. Does it feel completely pointless? Or maybe there's a spark of hope. And I would love to hear from you in comments section about your experiments and what was the outcome 
and as well if you have this thought that what's the point is not gonna work then perhaps this is the depression speaking and and i'm not saying that because i want you to judge yourself or be self-critical but maybe that would be a good moment to actually become more curious about it next week in a second episode from this series we're going to be talking about how our physical surroundings can impact our depression and how even maybe cleaning one corner of our room can fight back the low mood and as always if you enjoyed this video then please like it subscribe and i'm gonna see you next one and thank you Bye-bye.